Hello, good morning and welcome to St Martin's Broad Main for morning prayer on Wednesday the 17th of January. We'll be using the order from Common Worship for Epiphany Season and commemorating Charles Gore, founder of the Community of the Resurrection. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. O be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> our psalms this morning are numbers 81 and 147 from verse 13. So we start with Psalm 81. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Sing merrily to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Take, Take up the song and sound the timbrel, for the tuneful lark with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, as at the full moon upon our solemn feast day. <coughs> for this is a statute for Israel, a law for the God of Jacob the charge he laid on the people of Joseph when they came out of the land of Egypt. I heard a voice I did not know that said, I ease their shoulder from the burden. Their hands were set free from bearing the load. You called upon me in trouble and I delivered you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and proved you at the waters of Meribah. <coughs> O oh, Israel, if you would but listen to me. There shall be no strange God among you. You shall not worship a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought 
reaching up from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I shall fill it. But my people would not hear my voice, and Israel would not obey me. So I sent them away in the stubbornness of their hearts, and let them walk after their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. Then I shall soon put down their enemies, <coughs> and turn my hand against their adversaries. Those who hate the Lord would be humbled before him, and their punishment would last for ever. But Israel would I feed with a fine sweet, and with honey from the rock would I satisfy them. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Use the prayers that follow in silence. And so to one four seven from verse thirteen. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. Sing praise to the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. He has established peace in your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends forth his command to the earth and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool and scatters the hoarfrost like ashes. He casts down his hailstones like morsels of bread. Who can endure his frost? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and judgments to Israel. He has not dealt so with any other nation. They do not know his laws. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Great is our Lord, and mighty in power. turn to the morning prayer during Epiphany for the Song of the New Jerusalem. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. The night still covers the earth. Darkness above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land, or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight, nor moonlight shine upon you. But the Lord will be your everlasting light, your God will be your splendour. For you shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. So before we move to Genesis 8, this is a short biography of Charles Gore. 
Born in 1835, Gore became one of the most influential of Anglican theologians. He helped reconcile the church to some aspects of biblical criticism and scientific discovery, yet was Catholic in his interpretation of the faith and sacraments. He was also concerned to bring Catholic principles to bear on social problems. As an Oxford Don, then as a canon of Westminster, he was renowned for his preaching. In the 1890s, he was the founder and first leader of the Community of the Resurrection, which in later years settled at Murfield in Yorkshire. From 1902, he was successively Bishop of Worcester, Birmingham and Oxford. He was much mourned at his death on this day in the year 1932. And so to Genesis 8, the first 14 verses. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and all the domestic animals that were within him, with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the earth and the waters subsided. <coughs> the fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were closed. The rain from the heavens were restrained and the waters gradually receded from the earth. At the end of 150 days the waters had abated and in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, the ark came to rest on the Mount of Aram. The waters continued to abate until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains appeared. At the end of forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the <coughs> to see if the waters subsided from the face of the ground. But the, bug, the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him in the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took it, and brought it in to the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent the dove from the ark. And the dove came back in, in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and <coughs> sent out the dove, and it did not return to him any more. In the six hundred and first year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark. And it looked and looked and saw the face of the ground, but the ground was dry. In the second month, on the twenty seventh day of the month, the earth was dry. That's fine, thank you. <coughs> this is one of those. Uh, stories that was is found this thing called the Gilgamesh epic you may know where many ancient civilizations had a story of a great flood <coughs> and uh, it covered what they would call the whole earth and whether that was the entire globe as we would know it or whether they meant what they knew of the earth is a moot point and for some it's important that everything was covered and for others less so but here we've got um, the end of that great inundation and <coughs> a great long timetabled list of a chronology of how it worked and it's the sort of passage that I expect somebody people have spent ages looking at and working out I don't know the various different stages happened at different times in the Jewish calendar of their various feasts and festivals for example um, we know that the numbers <coughs> the um, Stating of numbers in scripture is important because they have significance, but I'm afraid I don't know my Jewish feasts as well as I might, or the significance of some of those figures. Um, but we're told that God made a wind to blow, so God brought the rain and God brought the drying. And then there's that slightly more straightforward section in the middle where. <coughs> We've got 40 days again. Um, 40 days is a figure that links us to the idea of um, Jesus in the wilderness and the 40 years. So I do know a little bit about that number. 
but we'd had 40 days of flood, I think, and then we got 40 days of drying. And Noah sends out the raven, which doesn't come back because it can eat carrion, the dove that comes back because there's nothing for it to eat, then he goes out again sometime later, and there's a miraculous olive leaf that it brings back. Then he's released, and uh, the dove didn't come back anymore. And that sign of the dove with the olive leaf just as the story of the flood is fairly universal, so that image of the dove with peace is fairly universal, but for us as Christians, it relates to the Holy Spirit. And whatever we think of the ins and outs and the actualities and the scientific elements, the fact, if you like, of the flood, whether it was around the world or, or the known world then, we can recognise the power of God in it and our vulnerability before his power and judgement and how seriously he takes the way the world operates towards itself, creation and humanity. And Jesus is that God, the babe in the manger that the wise men went to see. They saw the signs of the times. So our next reading is Matthew 24 from 29. Immediately after the suffering of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven, with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. For the fig tree, from the fig tree, learn its lessons. As soon as it is, its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away, so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Who then is the faithful and wise slave whom his master has put in charge of his household to give the other slaves their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly, I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. But if that wicked slave says to himself, my master is delayed, and he begins to beat his fellow slaves, and eats and drinks with drunkards. The master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at, a, at an hour that he does not know. He will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Thank you. It's an 
interesting set of readings. Some of them, some of the paragraphs, are much more the sort of thing we're familiar with Jesus talking about. From the fig tree, learn its lesson, for example. Um, <clears throat> and then talking about, uh, for as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking at the time of Noah. And then that story about the, well, that uh, comment about the faithful and wise slave. <coughs> but whoever's put this passage of scripture together, um, they all link with the idea of Jesus' return and the winding up of things. And the first paragraph that you read is very much more like Revelation, probably quite late, therefore, and uh, more like some of the um, scriptures that didn't make it into um, the New Testament, the Greek scriptures, we have it. Much more difficult to grasp and understand in terms of what it's actually describing, if you like, factually, but it's, <coughs> its meaning is uh, clear, if that makes sense. I don't know quite what that will look like. <coughs> and then in this, the second paragraph, there's that line, heaven and earth will pass away. It's one, an example of a scripture that supports the idea that God is going to do away with everything and start entirely again, which fits with the idea of God annihilating everything on earth that didn't swim, um, except for those things that he shut in the ark. And then in the next paragraph, that discussion of two people working in the field, one taking the other left, two grinding meal, one taking the other left. I never know quite whether that's to do with the rapture, as it were, that idea where people will be taken up into heaven. So whether the one that taken is being taken to blessing, or as it might mean, because here it comes immediately after the flood came and swept them away, whether the one being taken will be being taken with the heaven and earth that is passing away, I don't know. But uh, one, way or one way or the other, there's going to be a shocking separation, I guess, is something we can take out of that, however we interpret it, something to be fearful of. So we move from a description to the beginning of the suggestion that we should be ready. And if we're not ready, we will be punished if we're not doing what we've been called to do, looking after those that have been put in our care. However far up the food chain, if you like, we are. If we're not fulfilling our calling, then as far as the uh, writer or writers of Matthew are concerned, they put these words into Jesus' mouth that are very certainly not meek and mild. He will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Therefore you also must be ready. May God be gracious. Shall we turn back then to the responsory in morning prayer during Epiphany season? <coughs> we'll move on then to the Song of Zechariah and there's a refrain uh, which you can either look up or I can just uh, read through and we'll join together at the main body. Shall we do that? Very good. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham 
to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. <clears throat> Let us pray. One God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We thank you for bringing us to the beginning of this new day. We thank you that you have, through the wood of the cross, like the wood of the ark, saved us from our wrongdoing and our past, and that you, in making a way before us, you are drying our land. We pray that we will have the wisdom to sense when the time is right to move in whatever area of life we are considering, as congregations, as individuals, as you gave Noah that wisdom in relation to the tests he set out. We also recognise the urgency of your call, your mission and ministry, which you have in your wisdom called us to be a party to. We pray that you'll be merciful, that we will not be found wanting. And that you will use us to bring your salvation where we may. With Operation World, we give thanks for the impact of the gospel on the educated across Africa. The work of SU and IFES and others amongst students has been remarkable. As a result, a large proportion of Africa's professionals and leaders are committed Christians and their influence is becoming decisive. We pray that it may continue. Yet there are still some nations with the smallest number of evangelicals is prayer guide written by evangelicals. So we pray for Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Mauritania, Senegal, Gambia, Mali, Guinea, Niger, Niger, Djibouti, Somalia, Mayotte and Comoros. We pray that these and all nations will continue to thrive and flourish with freedom of religion, that all branches, types and flavours of church may thrive together as a cord of many strands and that others may be woven in continually. Christian Action Research Education, Lord, we pray about the growing crisis of water shortages affecting a growing proportion of the world's population. We pray that you would inspire those working to conserve, purify and desalinate water so that this trend, they write, can be reversed to restore the world's environment and provide for its people. That's a mighty prayer. But at least 
with my lack of faith that people would be enabled to adapt and change to there being not enough water available. We pray at least that those who have power will recognise this crisis which is already upon us and the influence it has on unrest, on war and on migration. From Green Christian, over 100 MPs from all parties have signed a petition calling for the 621 million parliamentary pension scheme to divest from fossil fuels. Jeremy Corbyn, the latest signatory, said two years on from the historic Paris Agreement, our country must show leadership in confronting the existential threat posed by climate change. To help protect our planet, we must wean our economy off its fossil fuel dependency and do more to move towards clean and renewable energy. We pray that that view will become increasingly mainstream and that those companies that employ and provide fuel and energy, which is so significant, will have the wisdom and courage to continue to move towards small-scale local community accountable, renewable, that simply harvests without diminishing from the sun, the water and the rain, linking in with developments around the world <coughs> as we don't need to have vast stores of capital to develop and invest in such schemes. <clears throat> and we continue to pray in our benefice for a life group in every village to boost our prayer, study, service and fellowship. We pray for our church membership across the smaller congregations for John and Louise, Frida, Sarah and John, Peter and Wendy, Selina and Tim, Philippa, Anthony, Rebecca and Andrew, June, Timothy and Paul, David and Helen, Bill, Marilyn and Roger, Leslie, Julia, John, Linda, Elizabeth, Nicola, Dorothy, John and Jennifer, Marion, Ruby, Guy and Jenny, David, Harry, Paul, Sam and Serena, Richard, Ian and Sarah, Kate, Anna and Jerry. We thank you for all that each of these brings to the life of their community and the Christian element of that. We thank you for their faith, their time, their talents. We ask that you bless them with health, wealth and prosperity, with salvation, healing and deliverance. We pray for those amongst these who are finding things difficult through sickness, through change in circumstance. And we pray that you make yourself present to them, that they will know that, call on you, have people speak with and support them, whether people who believe on you or no. We pray that those for whom life is going well, we ask that they may be moved to give you thanks and to recognise from whom they receive their blessings and be prepared, therefore, to share with those who are not doing so well. And we pray that you will draw these for whom we have prayed and ourselves towards a fuller experience and understanding of faith, just as you drew the Magi who recognised signs of the times but made a determined effort to travel and came in many respects to the fullness of yourself. Though not crucified yet, nevertheless incarnate. And they recognised that and travelled with it. Their relationship with world powers changed as a result. Lord, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new, transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.